to Debbie Brown, it's really easy to understand why Medicare is going bust. Since a back surgery gone bad six years ago, she's had plenty of time to think about it. To think about the wheelchair the government has been renting for her with Medicare dollars. For this squeaky chair. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of embarrassing. So far, for this very wheelchair, taxpayers have spent more than $1,200 just to rent it. So who would come up with a system where renting this wheelchair would cost four times the amount of money it would take to actually buy it? Let me give you a hint. We've flown to Billings, Montana. We've been driving for five hours through a country that has more antelope than people. And I tell you, we've done the bridges to nowhere, the roads to nowhere. But this may be the topper. It was supposed to be $15 million to replace what appears to be a perfectly fine border crossing station, especially when you consider the Bureau of Transportation Statistics say this border crossing station at Scobie, Montana, sees fewer than 20 vehicles a day. It's not that you could just call this border crossing slow. Here I am in the middle of the day, sitting in the middle of the road. There's nobody here. This is the clause buried deep in the executive bonus pay section saying, new restrictions shall not be construed to prohibit any bonus payment required to be paid pursuant to a written employment contract executed on or before February 11, 2009. In other words, if AIG executives already had it in their contracts to get these bonuses, Congress couldn't touch them. Who wrote that clause? So far, everyone is denying it was them, including Senator Chris Dodd, who heads the Senate Banking Committee. When we asked if they wrote the loophole, the five committee members from the House all said, not me. And the five members from the Senate said, same thing, not me. Well, listen to what happened here. We wrote the language in the bill. Looking for terrorists? Meet the Robinsons, James, the former assistant U.S. Attorney General and Washington lawyer on the terror watch list. For years now. This James Robinson is a retired Air National Guard Brigadier General. He still flies as a pilot for a major airline, and get this, is licensed by the TSA to carry a gun in the cockpit, but he's not allowed to check his luggage at the curb. They've got these two lists that aren't talking to each other. I'm carrying a weapon, flying a multi-million dollar jet with passengers, but I'm still screened as, uh, you know, on the terrorist watch list. And this James Robinson is, well, James Robinson, the third grader. Are you a terrorist? I don't know. This is the story of a young man who wants to attack America, who joins Al-Qaeda, meets some of its top commanders, volunteers to become a suicide bomber. His story begins not in the Middle East, not in Europe. His story begins in middle-class America, a typical all-American childhood, playing baseball, riding bikes. He is Brian Neal Venus, and he is part of a frightening new trend, homegrown terrorists. Radicalization is definitely on the rise in the United States. American citizens radicalizing, eager to kill their countrymen. Venus is the terrorist next door, the American Al-Qaeda. What do you think when you see it? Stay alive. And I knew that I had to survive this. I went up like that with my hands up to show no threat. This was a lynching on video. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant. I think the verdicts lit a match, but the tinder was already in place and very dry. Are you able to forgive those cops? Have you let those demons go? 
Did you hang on to that money or did you throw it away? Can we can we all get along? Can we can we get along? Rodney King, now 45, usually begins his day on a skateboard. The exercise, he says, keeps his muscles from stiffening. One side effect from all his injuries. King's nightmare begins just after midnight. He and two friends, out celebrating, head west on the 210 freeway. I had just gotten word that my old construction company had uh, called me to come back to work that following Monday. But the celebration is cut short. State police clock King's car going 110 miles per hour and immediately start a nearly eight mile high speed chase through LA neighborhoods. King has always maintained he may have been speeding, but only a little. However, in this rare interview, he sets the record straight. I, I was doing 100. I did every bit of 100. In Italy, a British exchange student raped and murdered in her room. It was horrible. A young lady bled to death. Amanda Knox, her American roommate, is charged with the crime. My husband called me and said they've arrested Amanda. A media frenzy. Can we just get by? Rife with tales of cover-ups and sex games turned deadly, all centered around the beautiful young student dubbed Foxy Noxy by the tabloids. Now in a dramatic turn of events, Amanda Knox is free after being convicted of murder abroad. from this message? If so, GOP is through. The Tea Party movement is claiming that they hunted you and that you're a rhino, and they're claiming a victory against you. What's your reaction? No more politics as usual. We the people! We can't do this alone. It's we the people! USA! We know that we still have outstanding votes to count in this primary, but based on where we are right now, I don't see a scenario where the primary will turn out in my favor. Senator Murkowski, I'm Shannon Travis at CNN. Oh, this, nice uh, the Tea Shannon. Party movement is claiming that they hunted you and that you're a rhino and they're claiming a victory against you. What's your reaction? Shannon, I said I'd get back to you on it. I just wanted to see what the senator's reaction was to that, because it's passing around emails and claiming victories in Michigan. The, the, the Tea Party Express was very involved in the state of Alaska. I think we all know that. Okay. Last time on name source, she's gonna do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Got it. All right. Thanks. thanks. Put Paul on it, Shannon. Hey, uh, just got off the phone with him. We can go with it, but it's a single source, so somebody's gotta approve it. If I say right now, if we report as a network that an unnamed source is confirming that she will do a write-in candidate, are we gonna, you know, have egg on our faces? Like, no. No, you'll be fine. Got it. I have a relationship with them, yeah. So, I mean, what do you want to do? The road, slide back, please. Come back, we've got a Slide back. back. 
Fight right back. I want to make a piece. First of all, I just want to thank God for bringing me through the, one of the most trying times in my life. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day that I get to be reunited with my family and go home for some quality time with them. I made a decision to go home and, you know, to, to, to get my firearm and carry with me that night. And, you know, who knew that that night would change my life in the way that it would. So right now, I'd like you to meet Tiger Woods and his father, Earl Woods. My dad has always been adamant. Um, all throughout my childhood, only play, play the game of golf, play from your heart and soul. Tiger Woods is the best that's ever played. 14 majors, over 100 million in prize money. My wish emergency. I need an ambulance immediately. I have someone down in front of my house. They hit a pole. She said she was completely blindsided on Thanksgiving Day. I was unfaithful. I had affairs. I cheated. I was so madly in love, I couldn't walk away. I think the Tiger hit professionally rock bottom. I think that our father was a part of Tiger so much that when he passed, Tiger became lost. He was the athlete of the decade, dominating his sport by crushing the competition. My name is Paul Delgado. I got into boxing when I was 12 years old. My dad took me to a local boys club. I just fell in love with the sport. I saw a lot of little kids doing it. I was fighting a lot in school. My dad told me that uh, boxing would be a good outlet for me. And I started off kind of rough. I started off with two losses real early in my career at 12 years old, but I never quit. And, that, and, that's, and that's what boxing instilled in me as, a, as, a, as an adult, is uh, that never quit attitude. Magnifique. Oh yeah, this is it. I'm Chip Brown, also known as Big Man Bakes. I'm 6'5", 260, and uh, I bake with very delicate hands. So Welcome to Big Man Bakes. Thank you. How are you? That's me. Welcome. First time. You're the guy. I'm the guy. I'm Big Man Bakes. <laughs> I was not on a trajectory to uh, be a master baker. I, I was on a trajectory to even do politics, medicine, or something like that. I got sent to college, and I happened to have a Betty, Betty Crocker book, and there was a girl that I was trying to impress that her birthday came up and nobody was there, and, and I said, I'll be there. Let me read this book bring over a cake and see what happens.